the underground is vast and really, really weird and slightly confusing. DC Universe's Doom Patrol, Episode 9, Review and Breakdown. Hey Twisted People, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here and today I am doing a review and breakdown plus my comic book talk of DC Universe's Doom Patrol, Episode 9, Jane Patrol. So if you're new here, this is the way it goes. I do my overall thoughts of the episode, as in my overall thoughts of the episode, the happenings in the episode and what I thought about that. Ship talk because I do love talking about relationships. Also, because this is based off of a comic book series and comic book characters, I do comic book talk, of course. And finally, I do my predictions, which are usually wrong and very, very basic when it comes to this show. Overall, this was a quiet episode, but a necessary one. But up to this point, we've had episodes that are really in your face, so drastically weird and zany, almost also with a lot of a lot of dark humor, which I have totally enjoyed up to this point. And I think this episode was somewhat of a break from that to a certain degree. There weren't as many laughs here and there, um, rightly so, because of the subject material, but I think it was a necessary one that we had been building up to when it came to the character of Jane and what had been alluded to regarding her situation and what, you know, how she came to be her origin in a way. This wasn't really an origin story per se. It was more so maybe a re-origin, maybe a fixing of origin, a repurposing of character in the sense of Jane losing her way and it was a necessary one. I thought it was poignant. I thought it resonated. It yeah, necessary is the word that keeps coming into mind for me with this. And I thought it was well done. I think they did it in a classy way. Once again cuz I like I said in the other previous episode about what they could have showed versus what they alluded to and stuff. So I I think they did this in a classy way. It made you uncomfortable as it should given what happened to the character, but I think it also did a way that it was empowering for the character, but also still good storytelling. So I appreciated that. The search for Jane in the underground. So this episode starts with Jane still being unconscious and the rest of the Doom Patrol don't know what to do about that. To the point where Vic says he wants to, he had kind of hoped maybe they could magic school bus inside her brain, which isn't really far off for the Doom Patrol because probably they could totally do that, which they sort of do when Cliff gets sent in there by the negative energy that's in Larry. Also, big ups for a friggin' Magic School Bus reference because that was one of the best cartoons of my childhood. Thank you very much. While this is going on with Cliff being transported mentally into Jane's brain, we see Karen, the personality we were introduced to last episode, being taken in by Hammerhead into the area where the other personalities are waiting for her. And we see these characters, these personalities, don't all look like Jane herself, which I thought was a smart move, right? But different characters to kind of show their personality in a way by actually having their real physical selves. So that was interesting in that sense. And we find out that basically Jane has been in hiding when it comes to not wanting to go back up to the surface. And so the other personalities surround her and tell her by explaining also to us, the audience, that there needs to be a primary personality. Because if there's not a primary personality up front, that you know, upsets the equilibrium of the rest of the underground and it can be disastrous for them all. So they pretty much convince Jane to go back up. She doesn't want to. She's very reluctant to. She gets on the train where driver eight, another personality who doesn't go up to the surface, they just conduct the train that takes people up to the surface. That Jane can take a break in a way by pulling the emergency button and driver eight you know, in the time that she has to take to fix the train, that gives Jane a little bit of time to maybe try to figure her her stuff out. So while Jane is taking a detour, we see that Cliff is inside of Jane's underground, and basically he is in human form, which was really cool to see, of course. I always like when they do that. They did it with Larry, too, when it came to being able to see their human. So you see those glimpses of them, and so you get to be a little bit more emotive when it comes to, you know, viewing their, respo- their responses and stuff and interaction with other characters. So Cliff 
has an interaction with driver eight who he thinks is going to help him but of course she calls hammerhead and uh they take him to the mental jail in there cliff sees karen again and also jack straw which is a personality that looks so creepy as a scarecrow i'm not afraid of clowns but i i you know scarecrows actually creep me out for some reason i don't know what that's about but yeah that was there and so Cliff and Karen have something of an interaction where Karen basically tells Cliff that Jane won't be able to fulfill him in the way that he wants. You know, she's kind of hinting towards romance, but she basically says he will never get what he needs out of Jane. And then Jack Straw pretty much helps Cliff start to build a hole to escape the prison. The personality, Penny Farthing, who we saw earlier with Jane and found out that Jane is somehow trying to go to the well, which I'll get to in a second, basically tells Cliff that they need to stop Jane from taking this detour. Jane, in looking for purpose because she doesn't understand why she needs to keep going to the surface because she doesn't see a point in living, it seems, basically is told by the sisters another personality which is like a three-headed woman psychic tells her to go to the well which is very ominous and we know that the well doesn't seem to be a very good place i'm thinking it's well but like minus the w plus the h in the front as Penny is showing Cliff through the underground to get to Jane to confront her to keep her from not going to the well, we also find out that a personality named Miranda was actually Cade, the original personality of the body that Jane embodies, was the first primary Miranda was and then something really terrible happened and basically Miranda is now fragmented and it's a disaster zone in her station because all the personalities have stations and so yeah that's what we learned that Jane was not the first primary so things pretty much reach a climax as Cliff finds Jane and really tries to appeal to her to not go through with going to the well, which he also believes is probably not the best place for her to go. But Jane isn't trying to hear it because she's really lost her way. She really doesn't know who to trust, as she keeps saying in the episode. She doesn't know what is the point, pretty much as we can surmise the point of living, right? So she just doesn't want to go. And so she pretty much walks away from cliff and goes towards the well and then we kind of have one of the worst memories right we see Kay, the original like the five-year-old the young girl and how she keeps trying to you know finish this puzzle which you know we've seen the symbolism of puzzles up to this point and the picture of the puzzle is actually one of the memories that jane was in earlier where she was asking penny what is this memory? None of us remember it. What is it? And it's actually not necessarily a memory, but more so a place that the original K kind of, I guess, zoned out to when she was trying to do her puzzle anytime, you know, her father, that perv, came around. So Jane pro tries to appeal to Kay, even though she's a memory, to say, I don't know what you want me to do. Do you want to be happy? Should I be happy? Am I, am I allowed to be happy? And then she's led out by the symbol of the father. And so she's at the well, ready to jump in, pretty much probably to die, right? To commit suicide. That's what we can kind of guess what the well is, because that's pretty much where Miranda went, and she's not around anymore. So Cliff tries to pull her off. Now, up to this point, Cliff also pulled off his skin so that he could get by Black Annis, who is a, like, male-hating personality with claws. And he explains that he's no man, and he's actually better than he was when he was a man so she lets him pass because he, she doesn't see him as a threat and so he basically appeals to Jane and she's not snapping out of it until weird puzzle configuration of her father resurfaces as some giant and is attacking Cliff and rips off his legs and that snaps Jane out because she truly cares for Cliff and so she confronts the father puzzle thing and that weakens it. And so then Jane and Cliff reemerge again. This was an intensely emotional episode for the Jane character in a lot of ways. I mean, it's it was very heavy subject material, right? I mean, wow. I mean, I was uncomfortable in some ways, just dreading what was being alluded to, what this character had to go through, what these personalities have to endure. I think it also gave us some growth for the Cliff and Jane characters, respectively, and also maybe together as well, which I'll get to in my ship talk. But I think for Jane, with her, I don't know if it's necessarily growth in the sense of 
of maybe she'll be nicer to everyone, nothing like that, but more so maybe she feels like she'll give herself permission to be happy or to search for some semblance of happiness. So maybe we'll see that. And we got a confession out of Cliff of, you know, him thinking that he became a better person when he actually lost his flesh and became a robot. My fave personality of this episode was definitely the one that scared me the most, which was Jack Straw, who didn't do much. Jack Straw didn't even move. I was so creeped out. Like, that stuck with me. I was like, what? Why is there a random scarecrow down here? What is going on? Like, that's a lot. Also, we got a glimpse that Larry's negative energy is super powerful. And we're just learning new things that this thing can do. This entity. I don't want to call it a thing. This entity can do every episode, right? It's just kind of like, I don't want to think that the energy is all powerful because I think that would be too easy for plot, right? Because if it can do all these things, why hasn't it gone to find Chief yet, right? So I don't think it's necessarily that, but we are learning little things that it can do, like transport people into other people's mind. Cliff and Jane. I think you probably already knew I was going to talk about this, just given my other talks about this very ship and how, like I said last episode, I do think this is a romance. I think people may be so used to the idea, because of mainstream, you know, media, that romance always has to connect to the sexual. And I think, if nothing else, this episode emphasized that, well, Cliff don't have them parts, but also that it's not necessarily about it being sexual, because that's probably not what the Jane character wants or or like it's totally probably done with that kind of aspect. So it's this more so this connection of hearts, this connection of minds that doesn't necessarily have to be platonic, right? So I do think that's a romance. I do think we saw a growth between them. And I think we saw that Cliff is the one person that can truly get through to her. We saw that glimpse of Penny showing a memory that all the other personalities were not okay with because Cliff entered her life, right? And like Penny said, he gave her hope. Okay, so for this segment of comic book talk, I really want to just emphasize the differences and some of the highlights between the comic book and the live TV series when it comes to Jane's personalities, but also this particular plot line, which was actually done in the comics, just in a different kind of way. And the plot line I'm referring to is Cliff going into Jane's mind when Jane refuses to come back out to be the primary. This same plot line, or more so the premise of this plot line, was actually done in the 1990 Doom Patrol comic as well. So in the 1990 comic, Cliff does go into Jane's mind with the help of the negative energy. So that is a similar thing. But the reason why Jane reverts is actually different. Now, in the live action, we know it happened because of the situation, the kind of the break that happened with Karen. But even probably before that, because I guess it was building up because of what happened with Niles and what Jane is going through and not knowing if she can trust, like, the father figure that she ended up getting through now. So she reverts back and she doesn't want to go back out because she feels like she can't trust anyone anymore but in the comics it happens after a confrontation with an entity called the fifth horseman so after the situation with this character called the fifth horseman jane ends up reverting back into herself much like the uh, tv series showed and she doesn't want to come out so cliff goes into her mind and it's explained in the comics why cliff can do that because he's the one that's closest to her who can break down her defenses in the comic book, a lot of the same things happen. Pretty much the overall structure of, you know, the main the main points. You know, the whole thing with Miranda, the idea of what happened to Kay that originated the other personalities, things like that. Although in the comics, I will say, from what I have read, there are other characters that get a little bit more play that we didn't see as much in the live action. In the live series, we saw with this episode that the daddy personality, which is considered one of the personalities in the underground, is some giant, weird, puzzle entity, giant thing. And in the comics, it's pretty much the same, although the difference is it's a lot more, like, disgusting, rightly so, for this character in the sense that it's not just puzzle pieces, but it's insects and also poop. Also in the comics, although Jane does end up resurfacing and her body is in the hospital, for whatever reason, Cliff gets lost and they can't reconnect with his mind. The negative power energy seems to have lost him. 
So at least in the live TV series, that particular plot point has a little bit of a happier ending that they both get to come back and resurface. So with my predictions, I'm going to lean towards the basic again. I had a debate. I'm like, am I going to go completely outlandish and just kind of be wrong? Or am I going to go with a little bit of the basic B again? And I think this may be middle ground in that I do think that Jane has had growth. And I think that will play a part in how she goes forward. But I don't think, because of the whispers that we heard at the end of the episode, I don't think that's the last that we have heard of this evil entity of the daddy personality inside of the underground. And I think we may see a reemergence of that. I think what we got shown in this episode is that not all these personalities are like on the up and up or good or maybe working towards the same thing. Okay, so what did you think of DC Universe's Doom Patrol episode 9? Jane Patrol. Did you like it? Did you think they handled the subject material classy? Do you think they could have done more? Do you think they could have done less? Are you happy that they focused in on this and did this plot line? Do you think maybe we should have got a little bit more of the other characters and maybe it was an AB plot going on? Let me know. Comment down below with your thoughts and comments when it comes to this episode. And also, be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror, dark fantasy, and dark superhero. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.